Hi, everyone. Welcome back. Uh, hopefully, you've been spending a lot of time working on your MAPS program. Uh, by now, you should have explored water and amino acids and how they interact. You should be, have, have looked at uh, membranes and how they work and why there's a need for specific transport proteins to get ions and things like water across membranes. Uh, so that's what we're going to talk about today is the water channel. And before you watch this video, you really should have had some time to spend with the aquaporin model. Uh, reading the paper by Murata, going through the worksheet that I gave you, trying to understand the important parts of, of the protein structure, use the gene map that I gave you. Hopefully that will help you try to understand the different domains of the protein and how they work together. And hopefully, most of you have an aquaporin model that you could have used during this whole process because I think it's really important to have that 3D model. And if you don't have one at this point, uh, before you actually design one down the line, feel free to uh, try to get, uh, get us to send you one through the lending library. That, all that information is on Haiku. All right, so if you've gotten to this point and you think you know a little bit about uh, aquaporin, let's start going through some of the features of the protein together. Now, as you know, it's a water-selective uh, membrane channel. It's really important. We know that water can flow through membranes um, in very small quantities, very slowly, without a membrane channel. But for certain tissues, certain cells that really need rapid transport of water, a water channel, an aquaporin, is necessary. So let's start talking a little bit about what makes an aquaporin uh, protein special. Now, as in the Murata paper, they talked about it being um, having six tilted alpha helices. And you can, you can see that here, that form a right-handed bundle. And that means if you take your right hand, you should be able to see that it tilts just like your, your right hand. OK? Now, you are supposed to try to identify those helices and understand how they are indicated. How, how does the paper uh, discuss these? And what they are is they're numbered H1 through 6. And we're going to just ignore the in, what's on the inside at this point. We're just going to talk about the outside structure of the aquaporin. So this blue right here is the N-terminal uh, part of the protein. And so here is the way that the, um, the helices are arranged. There's H1. And also, each full alpha helix is connected by a loop. And you should have identified those as LA through E. So you have helix 1 that leads to loop A. Then you have helix 2 that, um, that goes to loop B. And then there's something that goes on the inside that we're going to ignore for now. Helix 3 comes back. And just to orient you, this is the extracellular part of the protein, and this is the intracellular part, OK? So now we're halfway through the protein. And then you'll see that there's this very long, long loop C that goes from one side of the protein all the way to the other. And you can see that I've got my halves of the protein uh, indicated by a dark green and a light green. So we'll take loop C, we'll go all the way to the other side, and then we'll see that we have helix 4 going to loop D, helix 5, loop E, and then um, helix 6. Okay? So those are the main full membrane-spanning alpha helices that make up the aquaporin. Now, if we look a little closer at these, they're kind of interesting. So let's look at just the one, the first half. And you'll see that here's one, two, and three. And you see that one and two look parallel to each other. OK? They kind of are in the same plane. And then you've got helix three is at an angle. You see the same thing on the other side. Helix 4 and 5 are parallel. And then helix 6 kind of comes in at an angle, OK? So when we think about aquaporin structure, we have to keep in mind that, uh, that it doesn't exist in the membrane as, 
a monomer like this. It actually exists as a tetramer. So that means four identical copies of this aquaporin monomer work together as a, a, as a tetramer water channel. The structure of the monomer is really important in allowing these uh, monomers to come together in a tetramer. These flat surfaces that are uh, made with these parallel helices will um, butt up against these two helices to form the tetramer. Now, if you look at this carefully, you can see that each monomer has its own water channel. But you'll also notice that there seems to be a pore or a hole right in the middle of this tetramer. And people call it the central pore. Uh, there's a lot of controversy around this, though, because some people think that it's just, it's plugged up and it doesn't really act as a pore. It doesn't really do anything. Whereas other people feel like it is, they have data to show that it's an act actual ion channel. It allows ions to pass, um, and they say that it's gated. They say that these, these loops up here are somehow involved in, um, d in indicating when the, the pore will be open and when it will be closed, when the channel will be open or closed. Okay, so now we kind of have an understanding of how the outside of the, the protein is structured. But we know that it's a channel, and so a lot of the interesting stuff is on the inside, right, in the pore. So let's look at some of the helices that we have been ignoring up till now, right? And that, those are what they call in the paper short pore helices on the inside, right? And let's go back to what we know about the, the structure. We know that we have helix 1, loop A, helix 2, and loop B. Well, let's look inside now and understand where does loop B go? Well, loop B actually has something on the inside. It leads to this short pore helix. And they don't, because it's a short pore helix, it's, a, it's kind of a half helix, they don't call it helix one through six. They call it helix B because it comes after loop B. So then helix B leads to something that isn't really called a loop um, because it kind of is, it just sits in the membrane. And so that goes straight to helix 3. Helix 3 then attaches to this very long loop C. And that gets us to the other half of the pore. So we'll do that separately. Loop C then brings us to helix 4, loop D, helix 5, loop E. And of course, what is loop E going to be connected to? helix E, H E, helix E, then that finishes off with helix 6, okay? So basically in the worksheet and in the, the Murata paper, they talk about tandem repeats. And so that's the point of this, is that um, there are two, not identical, but there are two very similar halves to the gene and to the protein structure of aquaporin. And they think that that probably arose sometime during evolution as a, a, like a gene duplication. So let's see if we can see that in our model, all right? So here again is the, um, the front half in dark green and the back half, the, the last half of the protein in light green, okay? So let's open it up and turn the, the back half around. And let's see if we can see some similarities here. So that, look at those half helices. Hopefully you can see that those half helices look very similar in the one, the, the front half and the back half, okay? And you'll even see this asparagine right here. There's an asparagine in both parts and that we're gonna talk about that later as well. You should, have, you should have read about that in the paper, okay? Now let's actually rotate this a little bit. Look at that. We see the parallel helices. We see the one that's on an angle. They look very similar, don't they? They're not exactly the same, but they're very, the halves are very similar. So that's kind of interesting to be able to see that similarity between um, these tandem repeat, repeat sections. Okay, I just want to go over that basic structure that we looked at with, um, with this 3D model. 
Um, also looking at a tuber because it kind of simplifies things a little bit. Um, and many of you may have tubers, so you should be able to do this kind of modeling no matter what on your own. And it really does, I know when I was going through this, it really helped me understand how it all worked together. So basically this is what we're in review, this is what we're talking about. The end terminal end, helix one, and again in two, with tubers, we're identifying the, the helices, so it's, alpha helices are actually a helix. We're just going to um, indicate them as just this straight piece of tuber, okay? And basically it's helix one, loop A, helix two, loop B. Um, then you've got helix B, which comes after loop B, helix three. And then, remember this is that long loop C that goes from one half to the other, and then you start over again. Helix four, helix five, helix E, helix six, okay? So even after this video, you may want to get together with your group again and really kind of go over this again because it does take a little time to understand the inner workings of how this is all put together. Um, so then, we're going to go on the inside and understand what some of these very specific uh, amino acids on the inside that line the inside of the pore, how they work to make sure that water gets through very rapidly but excludes everything else, excludes all other ions. So that will be the next video, so stay tuned for that.